why do media publishers clickbait all the time? Well, they clickbait because they want clicks. It's kind of as simple and as cynical as that. Ultimately, all the media publications you know, whether it's BuzzFeed or The New York Times or Fortune Magazine or Bloomberg or Fox or Vice, they're all there to make money. And they're all right now not making enough money. In fact, if you look at most of the news reports, most of them have missed their revenue projections by quite a bit, hundreds of millions of dollars. And so there's an incentive to really get people to click and read the videos and articles. But the thing I think a lot of the general public doesn't understand is that when it comes to clickbait, the person making the content often isn't the person selling it. So when you work in the New York media industry, there are writers or reporters, video producers and social curators. And there's kind of those three jobs and they all interface with each other. And writers and video producers will make the content and then that content will be sent to something to someone called a social curator. And that social curator's entire job is to maximize the reach of that content, that video, that article, that post, that reporting. And oftentimes, they didn't have anything to do with creating the content. Uh, but they're the ones that will choose the thumbnail or the photo, choose the headline, choose the description. So every time you see an outrageous like headline for an article or video on Twitter from like Fortune or Buzzfeed or the New York Times, often that's written by a different person than the person who wrote the article. And the person that wrote the article has no clue that's even what the headline or the description is on Twitter. Uh, they're two different people entirely. And a good example of this, both in terms of like media publishers clickbaiting and the content of the, 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 the article or video being different than the clickbait headline or description is uh, a YouTuber, PewDiePie. So he's covered quite frequently by media publishers partly because they know they can get clicks. Uh, his name in and of itself is clickbait. And you'll notice a lot of times they'll, they'll focus on keywords like anti-Semite, Nazi, hateful content, the N-word. And they'll, they'll clickbait it in such a way that like the headline and the description give no context to what, a, what has happened. And that's done on purpose. Like you're trained in New York media, there's, there's a couple different ways. Like, one, a big way you're trained is to get people to share content. That in some ways, sharing content, getting somebody to share content is more important than getting views, uh, especially for Facebook. And so the best way to get people to share content is to like play on their emotions. And the biggest emotion that gets people to share content is anger or outrage. And so you wanna have a really outrageous headline. And that outrageous headline doesn't necessarily have to correlate to the same level of emotion in the actual article. And like PewDiePie is a great example. You will see headlines all the time come out whenever there's a controversy around PewDiePie that are very clickbaity. You know, PewDiePie is a Nazi. PewDiePie uh, validates anti-Semitic content again. PewDiePie promotes anti-Semitic content. I think that was the most recent one. And like, for instance, Vox even had to go back and edit their title to tone it down a bit after people on Twitter said, hey, this is, this is clickbait. Like this is not giving an, an accurate context of the situation. But at the end of the day, they don't really care because they've already gotten those clicks and those views in the first 24, 48 hours. And that's where most of the volume of traffic comes from, that 72 hour window. And in that 72 hour window, most publishers are going to go with the headline and description and photo that they think can get the most clicks. Um, whether that's truly accurate to the context of the story or not. Um, and you'll see this often. You'll see it where they'll, the, the publisher will go back in a day or two later and change the headline or change the photo uh, because people have spoken out, but the publishers don't really care because they've already gotten the views. So that's why there's clickbait. Clickbait exists simply to feed the advertisers. The advertisers want views. The best way to get views is to get people to get to click 
And the best way to get people to click is to say something outrageous, specifically something that plays on their emotions, um, specifically the emotion of like outrage and anger. And to further those clicks is to share. You want, really want people to share content and people share things that make them mad. Now, beyond that, you know, I think it's important to recognize if you're ever really curious to look into like a, a media publisher's uh, kind of masthead and look who the writer is and look who the social curator, or look for that term, like curator is for that company, whether it's Vice or Vox, um, and look at their Twitters. And usually in their Twitter, we'll say like, you know, social curator at Vice or at Vox. And those are usually the people really responsible for the headlines and the descriptions, not the person that wrote the article or made the video. And often, you know, that's, that's the reason why you see so much clickbait is because there is an entire position called social curator that exists at most media companies. And their job is to take any piece of content that's handed to them in the organization on their team and maximize the amount of clicks. Anyway, I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon, but that hopefully offers an explanation to why uh, there is an incentive to one clickbait and two, why clickbait isn't quite as simple as, as the, the author of the video producer just, just writing something outrageous. Anyway, just a thought. Have a nice night, you guys.